so it's a pretty simple setup here. And when it's a calm day and cloudy and there's no light, these nets are invisible. You can see them a little bit now just because it's sunny out, there's a little bit of wind. But the birds don't see the nets and they're flying through and just hit them and fall right in. we do is look for the direction you came in, came in this side. There you go. And he's out. Yep. Male awesome. nut hatch. We'll process this guy inside. All right, we've got a white breasted nut hatch here. So, white breasted nut hatch. It's got a little fluff on his face. There we go. These guys are really pretty. These are not woodpeckers, they're songbirds, but they act a lot like a woodpecker. So these guys, unlike the woodpeckers, they've got three toes facing forward, one in the back, it's called a perching foot. You'll notice this guy's got really long toenails, so he's got a great beak or great foot for climbing up trees. And his beak is a little upturned, so you can see that it's turned upwards. These guys climb up and down the trees and they poke under bark to look for insects. So it's a really good beak for foraging on trees. And we know it's a male because the back of his head is black. Let me get him in a better grip to show his head off. He's got a nice black cap going all the way to the back of his neck. Oh. And a female, he's a little feisty. <laughs> a female wouldn't have a black cap going all the way down her neck. It would cut off probably right behind her eyes. So you could actually tell the males and the females apart with a pair of binoculars. Oh. This is a downy woodpecker. <laughs> and it's a male downy woodpecker so you can tell it's a downy woodpecker because it's got some little spots on its tail and it's generally smaller than the hairy woodpecker and you can tell it's a male because it's got this nice red patch on the back of its head so we're maybe um if one person wants to be the note taker yeah, that, that would be I'll great thank you, you. So these guys, we can look up in this book. This is the guide to banding. It's called the Pile Guide. That's the author of the book. So it's the identification guide to North American birds. And this has every single bird in North America in it. So we can look it up and we know which band to put on it. We know how to age it. We know how to sex it. If it's a trickier bird to sex, these guys are pretty easy. So this guy takes a size 1B band. Here are the bands. These are USGS bands. They're federal data bands. And what this is going to do is give the bird a unique number that it'll carry for the rest of its life. So if another bander catches this bird, they can enter the information into a national database and other biologists can get that information. And there are lots of different sized bands. It's kind of like ring sizes. So we have a nice tool here. They're pliers with a specialized pin on them that will open up the bands. This is for a larger bird. So I just put the band on the appropriate pliers here. Mm -hmm. 
These guys are pretty scrappy birds. <laughs> So we just go in, put the band on, and I'm gonna read this number to Alex so yep. we can collect date on him. So this Downy Woodpecker's band number is 2541. Mm -hmm. And he kicked. <laughs> and the rest is 37036. So we basically gave him a social security number. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take some basic measurements We'll take the length of the wing, we'll take the length of the leg, and then we'll weigh him and then let him go. So really basic measurements. So his wing length is 93. Your little leg here. And we can actually age this guy too. We should do that one. Oh, his teeny little legs. <laughs> so woodpeckers have really cool feet. They tend to have short, strong legs. And they've got two toes. Let me get his little knuckle there. <laughs> oh, my toe. I just touched your belly. He's got two toes that go forward and two toes that go backwards. It's called a zygodactyl foot. It's really good for climbing trees. It's a good sign when they're making some noise like that. Looks like he's got a little funny anatomy here. His leg is. Oh my gosh, he's so short. 14 even. Age. Age. So, how do we age this guy? Woodpeckers are a little tricky to age. So I might show off real quick. So we're looking at the wing here, and we can age birds by characteristics of the plumage on the wing. So we're looking for differences between basically the primary feathers and their coverage. Those are different types of feathers here, and these secondary feathers and coverts. And in a younger bird, there will be a lot of brown, uniform brown. These look pretty black to us. For the records, we're all songbird biologists, so we're are a little <laughs> tricky. Like a so we weigh these guys with a tool called a uh -huh. sola. And this is a basic just hanging gravity weight. So he is 53 in the bag, 53 grams, and then we'll weigh the bag afterwards and do a little math and get the bird's weight. Okay, so we have another downy woodpecker in the net. It's biting me a little bit as I try to get her out. Come here, here we go. So you can tell that this woodpecker is a female because she doesn't have the red, the red cap um, <laughs> at the back of the head. And this bird, um, is younger than that first bird that we banded, I believe, because in the second year, I think it Oh is, yeah, look at that! So you, I don't know if you can see it in this video, but these feathers right here are the primary coverts, and some of them, like three of them look black, and then the ones that are closer to the body of the bird, they look brown. And so those brown feathers are older, um, and so they've had more time to become faded. Um, and so they've been retained. And yeah, I believe that this is a third year bird. Nice. Based on Kyle. So this one's three years old, and the male we caught earlier was more than three years old. Yep. Three's kind of the cutoff. You can tell if they're younger than three or older than three. Once you get beyond three, you can't get that annual aging. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, great. And we all have tip mice here. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, these guys are also residents. They're related to the chickadee. They're in the same family. And these guys are really cool. They're, so you can hear them alarm calling a lot. They're very vocal. And these guys have a pretty sophisticated alarm call system. And those D notes 
that they're doing um, actually relays information to other chickadees and titmice about predators in the area. So depending on how intense that D note is, these guys will know, oh, I need to get out of here right now, or it's not that serious. I can keep foraging the princess eaters. And you can age these guys by looking at the roof of their mouth. So they're probably all adults this year, mm -hmm. or at this time of year. And really Oh, he, there we go. So you can see, if we can see with the camera, sometimes the biting is a good thing. And this is kind of a cool bit of individual variation. This guy's got a bit of a birthmark on his foot. Oh. So he doesn't have any melanin on his right foot. Melanin is oh. the pigment that makes oh. dark brown. Yeah. So usually they've got nice black feet. You can see this left foot is black. These feet are black with black toenails. And this guy doesn't have any melanin. He's got a nice pink foot <laughs> with white toenails, which I've never seen that before. So let's see what those toes look like. And they've got nice black toes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this guy's got a pink foot with white toes, toenails. Oh. <laughs> He's like, what about my toes? <laughs> Your toes are cool too. <laughs> yeah, these are nice too. All right, so we've got a red-bellied woodpecker here. And it's a female. So the red-bellied woodpeckers have this red crest on the back of their head. And the male, the red goes all the way to the beak, but on the females, it cuts off right behind her eyes. And these, these woodpeckers are really common in Illinois. And they have a really long tongue. Sometimes they stick them out when they're in the hand. But a really cool bird. And I'm just gonna look up real quick. So just like our downy woodpecker, we can age the red-bellied woodpeckers by looking for differences in the feather wear and the color between these, these feathers here. These are the primary covers, the primaries, the secondaries, in the secondary cover. So I can already see there's some sort of molt limit going on here. We've got brown feathers, black feathers, all brown feathers here, black feathers. So it's not matching up. So that means it's a younger bird. You've just got to figure out if it's one year old, two years <laughs> old, or three plus years old. Maybe even three years old. Oh, very cool. So the, the females will lose the feathers on the belly. Like it, yeah. So that they can incubate their eggs. And Alex has a female with a brood patch as well. They're just forming. So that'll make a nice kind of heat packet that the mom will put right up against the eggs. Cool. So for woodpeckers, both the males and the females will, right. will get the brood patch because yeah. they'll both incubate and they'll switch off. Oh, that's so cool. Cardinal. These guys are notorious for being bitey in the hand and they're, they're very brave birds. So this is a male cardinal. Males are the bright red cardinals. They've got the beautiful black mask. They're just red all over. Um, these are songbirds, so they also have that perching foot, like the nut hat. <laughs> very screamy, they're very bitey. And these guys, you can't age cardinals like the other birds. So they don't have any good indicators on their wings like the downy woodpeckers do. So this guy, we can only call an after hatch here. We just know he didn't hatch this year, but he could have hatched last year. He could have hatched three years ago. We just can't tell. So with cardinals, the best way to age them is if you find their nests and follow them throughout their life cycle is the best way to age them. Or if they've hatched that year, you can tell them. We have a beautiful cardinal, our state bird. So this cardinal, we can look at his fat and his muscle quality. So he's got a nice, muscly chest. All that red. So I would call that a two out of, out of three or four. So he's very muscular. And the fat, we're gonna look for a little dollop of fat in between um, his clavicles or his furcula as it's called on a bird. And there's no fat in there. So that would be a fat score of zero. We can also look for um, breeding condition. So this guy's not breeding yet. If he were breeding, then his cloaca would be a lot more swollen than it is right now. But it's not. He's got a flat cloaca. So this guy's not breeding yet. It's still pretty early. And that's it. We've got a chickadee here. And here in Illinois, especially central Illinois, we have black-capped chickadees and we have Carolina chickadees. We have two different species. 
So we're going to take a couple measurements on this bird to figure out which one of the two species it is. Because the nice thing is, is that they have uh, different lengths in the wing and the tail, so they're pretty easy to tell apart. And these guys are great, both types of chickadees. These are our residential birds, so they spend the whole year here in Illinois. And they depend heavily on seeds. So they collect seeds throughout the winter, they catch the seeds, and then they feed on those until spring emerges and the seeds are back again. Uh, they're also very feisty birds in the can, so they're usually pecking and very alert and just trying to find any way to escape. <laughs> yeah, so let, let's get the tail length and the wing length and um, figure out which you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Our, we have this nice figure here in the pile book or in the, the chickadee page. And Alex just measured the wing and the tail. So the wing was 63 millimeters and the tail was 56. So with those two measurements, that bird's measurements fell into the Carolina region of this chart. If it had a longer tail, um, it probably would have been a black cap chickadee. So the big one on the left in Evelyn's hand is a white-throated sparrow. And the little one in Alex's hand is a chipping sparrow. Cool. So these guys are both migratory birds. Uh, the chipping sparrows actually stay here and breed here in central Illinois, this little guy. And the white-throated sparrows will continue north. They breed in kind of mixed coniferous woodland with some precipice and big open sunny spots within the forest. So we don't quite have that habitat around here in Illinois, but they'll breed up in Wisconsin and even up in northern Illinois to get the right habitat. Oh, very cool. And these guys, the males and the um, females, look the same, so we can't sex them. Mm -hmm. But the white-throated sparrows come in two different color morphs, so males and females can either be a cream morph or a tan morph. And this, this is a tan morph. So he's got a tan, or he or she has a, oh, he's biting me. He's got a tan <laughs> eyebrow, it's a supercilium going over its eye, right behind its um, yellow eye shadow. Mm -hmm. And if it were a white morph, it would be a really bright white, the color, same color as the throat. And that, that morph is actually tied to the um, corticosterone hormone, which is a stress hormone in birds. Oh. Shipping star is a very common vector in birds. <laughs> So I like to look for like the reddish chestnut cap yeah. on the chipping sparrow. And they have a, a very pale chest too. They're mm -hmm. almost ghostly when they fly. They've got so much white on their face and their belly. <laughs> cool. So we've got a blue jay here. Yeah. They're beautiful yeah, birds. Great. So their blue is structural. It's not a pigment. It only looks blue when the light hits the structures of the feather in a certain way, which is really different in coloration. And these birds are in the crow family, they're in Corvidae, and they're super smart. Now some of the birds in this family are as smart as three or four year old humans, they're really smart animals. They're really lucky to catch one in the net because they're tough to trip into in this net. <laughs> oh, so pretty.